530 and 6. You know, it's one of the hardest conversations you can have with a family member. How the Hospice Cincinnati is helping you get started is really important. I want to introduce you to Sandra Lobert. She is the CEO of Hospice of Cincinnati. A lot of you know that my dad died almost exactly a month ago. It was very quick. We did not expect it, and the man was afraid of dying. So he would not talk to us about what he wanted. He had a living will. This is not perpetuated. Your being here is not perpetuated by the fact that this occurred in my life. But while we're on the subject, let's go ahead and get it out there. You got to talk to your family. Right. It's hard, but you got to. Absolutely. One thing we all know is that the death rate, the mortality rate, is 100%. And yep. so often people don't talk to their family members about what's important to them. And what happens if you don't have that conversation is that people get to the hospital or get to the emergency room. The doctors ask family members, would your loved one want this or that? And the family members really don't know. And it really is very stressful for family members. Mm -hmm. It can lead to depression after the fact. So we really advocate that family members find time to sit down and talk to each other about what they want. There is, oh, and by the way, my dad died at Hospice of Cincinnati by total chance. So you guys did a great job, by the way. So here, but you have a living will. Most people will have a living will that's mm -hmm. very important. It explains, I want this, I don't want this kind of care. but. There's, there's intricacies within that that are really important for people to talk to each other about, aren't there? Yes, there definitely are. And there's a lot more care decisions that need to be made. Things like, do you want to be on artificial ventilation or nutrition? And um, just things that are a lot more medical that people don't tend to cover in a living will. And it's such a gift to your family members to let them know what's important to you because that way they're not left conflicted. Sometimes even within families, you get brothers and sisters that sure. have different values or different thoughts about what their loved one might want. And it's so much nicer when it's clear to everybody what's important to the person who's ill. But how do you even start that conversation? For example, in my case, my dad was so afraid of dying, he did not want to talk about it. But you gotta start somewhere. So how do you start it? Well, and we have a lot of good information on our website. We have a whole program called Conversations of a Lifetime that gives tips and talking points. And so often you can say something like, Dad, you've done such a great job taking care of me. I want to make sure that I can take care of you and honor your wishes at the end of your life. And often, people might say, oh, don't, we don't have to talk about that. I'm going to be fine. And we even offer suggestions on how to come back and say, I know you're going to be fine, but I still really want to understand what's important to you. We have a lot of good information on that. Okay. So we start the conversation. Should we record it? Should we write it down? So let's say there's a family, like I have brothers and sisters who live out of state, so that everybody is aware this is what mom or dad wants. I think that's a great idea. It's a great idea to communicate, even send an email. That's the way we all communicate sure. today to your brothers and sisters and say, hey, we talked about this. This is what mom and dad wants. The other really, really good thing to consider is there's a new kind of form called MOLST, which is Medical Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatment. And it's different than a regular advanced directive because it's a doctor's order. Mm -hmm. And it goes through a lot of the different care decisions that you might need to make. And that's really the most specific thing you can do. It's a different kind of advanced directive. And that's the best way to really be sure you not only know, but understand what some of those decisions involve. So if I can impose on you a couple things, folks. It is so much harder when you're in the process to have to make those decisions when you don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. So do yourself a favor, whether you're the kid or you're the parent or both, and make these things clear. It's hard conversation, but important. And I thank you so much for coming in, Sandra. It was a lot of, a lot of great stuff, hard to talk about, but certainly important. Thank Thanks. you so much.